Good afternoon, Robert. Dafa, it's lovely to see you. Thank you. Why don't you tell everybody who you are? My name is Robert Stevens. I'm a saxophone player. I've sat in with AMO a few times, um, playing saxophone and occasionally French horn parts. Um, I also do a little um, music engraving, uh, sheet music preparation, and, and I've done several projects for Dachlan, and we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, welcome. And um, let's start at the beginning, oh, as the song says. And uh, you were brought up and raised in Kentucky, right? Yes, a little town in Greenup County, Kentucky. I, to give you an idea how little the town was, the laundromat mm -hmm. and the police station shared a building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was a little town about 1,200 people. Um, mm -hmm. And most of my family is still there. Um, it's a very quiet place. Very quiet. <laughs> is it um, in northeastern Kentucky? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. It's on the Ohio River. It's close to Ashland, Kentucky. Um, it's in the what they call the tri-state area. Right. And um, in Greenup County, it's um, not a big place. You haven't heard of it. Uh, the closest big town is Ashland, and the closest real city is probably Huntington, West Virginia, which is a good 15, 20 miles away. Right, right, right. Uh, as you probably know, I went to undergraduate school in Kentucky. Yes. Center yes. College. And mm -hmm. it's, there's some beautiful country there. Oh, it is. Kentucky is a, a lovely place. Uh, parts of eastern Kentucky were hit hard by a lot of economic events over the past few decades, but really um, some of those same parts have pulled themselves out a good bit now and they're more diversified and it's a lovely place to be. Yeah, it's beautiful, <laughs> it's beautiful. And from there you went, where did you go to college? Um, well, I started at Moorhead State. I was going to be a band director. Fate, after a couple of years, stepped in and said, Robert, you're not going to be a band director. <laughs> um, this was probably not the worst idea, because I, I, as I've grown up, I've learned that maybe I'm, I wouldn't have been a good band director. I would have been one of those nags, because I, I get so into the music, I would forget that these are kids. Right. Let them be kids. But, um, this was before financial aid was really a thing much, and um, there were, to make an unpleasant story short, my parents said, that's it, we're not supporting you, and I was left on the high seas, so to speak, and since I was sort of left on the high seas, I joined the Navy, <laughs> and that's the next chapter. Right. And well, I spent two years in the Navy. Mm -hmm. I never once set foot on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I was a student the whole time. I was studying electronics engineering with an eye towards being a nuclear power um, technician. Again, this is probably a good thing that that never really came to pass because I had no great love for electronics engineering and you probably wouldn't want me driving a sub. <laughs> Just I mean, might have been fun. <laughs> but um, again, life intervened and I was given an easy out. Um, at the time they had over recruited for electronics people and the people who didn't quite make the the top of the list so to speak if they have an equivalent of the dean's list an admiral's list or whatever i wasn't on it it's as i said i had no had no real love for it and it didn't inspire me to be a good student mm -hmm. i was a kid i would had basically been thrown out of college do and that's what I had wanted to do. And you know, kids, they oftentimes act up and act out. 
and they don't do what's in their own interest. And that led me to not being in the Navy. <laughs> mm. Gotcha. Oh, I guess you want to know what comes next. Oh, absolutely. Oh, um, well. So, so from band director to nuclear engineer? Well, well, uh, with, I had only just to, I had only um, been studying the electronics engineering part of it so far. And then I was let go. I, I can work on a TV, like nobody's business, but that's not something that I ever really wanted to do. Um, so here I am. I'm not in college, I'm not in the Navy anymore. I have to support myself. And the fallback for almost anybody that doesn't have any real skills was, was food service. Hmm. And I bluffed my way into working in a, a fairly upscale private club and found that I had an absolute aptitude and, and love and joy mm -hmm. for, for food. I worked for a few years in different positions in the kitchen, um, buffet, line, grill, saute, the whole nine yards, and then I left and enrolled at Johnson & Wales. And uh, after that, I just had a fine time working in kitchens all over South Carolina, Charleston, and Columbia, South Carolina. Ended up in Greenville, South Carolina. I went to Greenville Technical College and got a certification in computer network administration. The very first weekend we were here was a, it was a Halloween weekend. And we ended up in um, East Atlanta Village, and all of a sudden I see this very sparkly bunch of people with music instruments badly playing coming down the sidewalk <laughs> at us, and I'm like, what in the world is that? And they danced right around us and kept going, and I went, well, that was the CD feed marching sure. abominable doing their boogeyman march, which is a, a, a yearly thing. Within three months, I had a saxophone in my hot little hands again and had been in, indoctrinated into CD feed. <laughs> and that, that's, they're a really special bunch of people. And well, if you haven't played in a long time and you fall in with a bunch of people uh, whose musical aptitude is always fast and loud, well, you play fast and loud and you get a whole lot of practice and it just all came back. And um, by then I had ditched the little saxophone, the alto saxophone, and I had a nice big berry sax. And uh, again, that was uh, that's a good way to um, improve your playing overall is to play a big version of your instrument if you're a wind player because of that reinforces your breath control and, and, and that it's a lot of fun the CD feed but that wasn't it wasn't the sort of music I, I wanted to play mm -hmm. and I when I wasn't playing with them I fell in with a couple of the concert bands in town and that was a lot of fun and I still couldn't play as well as I wanted and I'm like I need some help and so I asked around um, and found the name of a, a few um, teachers. I gave one a call and he set up an appointment for me and I told him what I wanted to play. I wanted classical sax. I really wasn't that much into the big band or rock and roll thing. Right. And I could do what I wanted to in that regard. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to focus on a more classical um, classical sound, and he's like, oh sure, we can do that. Here, let's play this bebop ex exercise. I'm like, but I just did the, that. And he said, oh yeah. You're, and then the next week it was the same thing, and I'm like, you're a great guy, but you're not the teacher I'm looking for. 
So here I was adrift again, and I kept asking, and I happened to be at um, Opus Music in Decatur, and I asked um, um, the owner there, David, was, um, he was boxing up a lot of music. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that he was, we were talking as he was doing this, it was a, a Saturday morning, and um, he was boxing up a lot of saxophone music. And I'm like, mm -hmm. are you getting rid of your saxophone music? He's like, oh no, <laughs> this is um, saxophone day at, at Emory, Emory and Georgia State yeah. come together to do saxophone day. And I'm like, why didn't I know about this? He's like, well, you, can, you could go today and uh, you can pay to get in. And I'm like, well, who is in charge of this? And he mentioned the name. He mentioned Jan Baker. And I had other things to do that day. And I, I couldn't just drop it and go running. But I emailed Dr. Baker at Emory. Right. And I started lessons with her. I took private lessons from Jan Baker for three and a half years. And she is absolutely spectacular mm. saxophonist. She's a lovely person too. Um, I, I've noticed this. It seems like the more talented someone is, especially when it comes to teachers, the more talented someone is, it's almost as if the nicer the person they are too. And I learned a lot from her that wasn't saxophone related. Mm. And I followed her from Emory, when she went to Georgia State and took, still took lessons there. Now she's off in LA. I'm not going to LA to take lessons. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny because um, two weeks ago in the last interview I had with Sarah and Randy Altman, that same topic came up spontaneously that, you know, there are certain people, certain musicians who are exemplary and the more famous, shall we say, the more gifted the more generous they seem to be mm -hmm. in encouraging younger people and, to, and their own students and, and others. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I, as I said, I learned a lot of non-saxophone pointers from, from Jan as well. Uh, this, just what you're talking about, that, that generosity, is like, I think the common term today is pass it on. Right. So that's, right. I try to do that when um, I, I play saxophone with the Georgia Perimeter Band, and I'm the, um, the um, section leader, I try to do that there. Right. I right. let somebody move up in the section as far as they're comfortable, and then I push them just a little bit more. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I, I let people settle where they're comfortable. Yeah. But um, when I was playing with Dr. Baker, or studying with, with Jan, um, we were always looking for good duet music or, or something, just to read through. And I basically got tired of, of <laughs> buying new music every week, and I started doing some transcriptions here and there, and it was, that was fun, and they were kind of well accepted. Another group I was playing with, we had a saxophone ensemble, and we never knew who was going to be there to play what. Right. And most arrangements you buy, well, they're very fixed. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, this alto, this tenor, this berry. And if you don't have one, two, three, well, they can't play this unless you can transpose on site. And most people, right. it's far too much of it. Most people don't like to do that. So I started doing more arranging and doing multi-part versions of, of existing arrangements. And over the course of the years, that developed into a website that I run called Sax Press. We have, they started out just a bit more than 10 years ago. And now I have customers all around the globe ordering saxophone arrangements from me. Um, everything from single player to large saxophone choirs. 
We do oh. take music that's basically in the public domain and then um, make an arrangement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, for, for saxophones. Sure. Some people don't like transcriptions, but there's a lot of good music out there. It's a shame it just sits on the shelf. Um, and, and um, yeah, um, arrangements for saxophone, saxophone with piano, saxophone mm -hmm. ensemble, quartet, whatever. So that takes a couple of skills. That takes the skill of knowing music and how to transpose. And it takes some sort of computer skill because you don't do it by hand, I think. No, no, no. No, fortunately there is a there's a notation software. Uh, one of one of the products that one of the programs I use is called Finale. And um, I tell people it's like it's like a note processor, almost like Microsoft Word is a word processor mm -hmm. because you use all these symbols for different notes, and instead of coming out in sentences, it comes out on staff, mm -hmm. and you can format that. And Finale is one of the sort of industry standards right. that a lot of publishers use, and you can, if you're if you're skilled with Finale. You, your, your final product looks exactly like sheet music you would purchase. Sure. I um, did an arrangement for a band in town, and the president of that band, when I handed it to him, he said, where did you buy this? And I said, I arranged this and printed it. No, this, this, this is, so you had you bought this somewhere. You, uh, you, I need to know so I can write you a, a receipt for donation. And he just simply wouldn't re would not believe that the, the sheet music had been homegrown, if you will, not not purchased. And that's how we met, basically. You and I mean, pretty, yeah, pretty much. You, you, we had met earlier when you um, you came in and, and played sax for the Bizet. Mm -hmm. the one of the Carmen Streets, I believe. Uh, or Lazy Inn. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. And I, I actually showed up, though. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the Lazy Inn, who just isn't there. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> no, no, no. Well, we were talking about, was it, was it you? Was it you who fell off his chair? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Wait, let's go back. Okay. You know, in the Carmen, in the Lazy Inn, you were playing a uh, solo pass. And if I remember, <laughs> you fell off your chair. Well, yes. And you continued playing. Well, what else are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, you just, you were like halfway on the chair, I, halfway I, off. Yes, I was, I was kneeling playing. and I was... <laughs> you can't stop. <laughs> yeah. You have to... And it was, it's such a, that, that saxophone solo is such a beautiful thing, it would Why just be wrong, wrong to stop. Right. And I really didn't fall that <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah, now now that I have gotten back into performing and, and playing, I've had several worst nightmare things mm -hmm. happen to me. So, um, well, there's the falling off the stage. Can you, you repeat that now in a stage manner? I, no, I would but, not, I, but not by choice. I, I'm sure someone could set that up, but let's not set that no. up there. But another time, I had on a tuxedo that was not tailor fitted and had a certain amount of polyester <laughs> in it, as did the shirt. I was standing and playing and I felt a little pop and one of my suspender straps gave way. And yes, my pants nearly did fall <laughs> off while I was playing on stage. But you didn't stop then. I did not Good stop. I took a little wider stance. And <laughs> it looked very powerful on stage, I'm sure. The audience did not know. I was dying inside. Sure. And another time, it seems like these things always happen to me. Earlier, this was at um, Perimeter College. I was doing a solo piece with the wind ensemble. And before... Um, before the show, the sound guy was doing a check, and he's like, just play something. I, I need to get your levels. And I do so, and I 
I'm playing, and here it's coming into the house, and it's very loud. And I'm like, that's not going to be piped back into the house, is it? Oh, no, 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 this is just for recording. I'm good. I don't need to hear myself echoing in my ear over the band. So we're doing this solo piece that starts off with a just a big sort of orchestra hit, and then this big, long, jagged run on the saxophone at a very loud volume. And remember, the sound guy said, oh, no, it's not being pumped back into the house. So here I am, and the band goes bang, and I go da 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 and it is louder than the loudest thing I ever heard, and it, it scared me so much that I, I jumped, and the band kept playing, and I kept playing. I finally <laughs> caught them. I finished that long, jagged run, and I gave it everything I could. And it just goes to show you that even if the worst thing you've ever dreamt of happens, mm -hmm. the audience will still applaud because they don't they know. know. Exactly. They did know when I fell off stage. They, or maybe they, maybe they thought that was written in. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it, it's... Now I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? I've had instruments break. I've had... Yeah. Yeah. Then you keep playing as best you can. It's amazing what you can repair with a paper clip and a, and a rubber band. Um, and occasionally I, I'll write something about this for the blog that I have along with Sax Press. And people are like, well, where did you just get all this experience? Where did you learn this? It's like, you pick these things up along the way. And um, if you don't venture, if you don't say, I can do this, you're never going to do it. And you don't grow. No, oh, oh growth, that's a, that's a scary thing, because it's not always a planned, structured thing. It's a lot like sometimes tap dancing on roller skates. <laughs> Finally, you get your feet. Finally, you can break and stop the way you want to gracefully, but you're going to get a skin knee or two here and there. Of course. And if you're if you're smart about it, you you recover and nobody knows you skinned your knee. Um, that's well, you, you know. You've obviously played different types of music. What's what's your favorite music? If I could. I would drop all the other ensembles I'm in and just play saxophone quartet music all day. I would do that. The director at the Perimeter College, uh, it, oh, I'm sorry, it's now Georgia State Perimeter right. College. Um, they like me to say it that way. Um, he doesn't like it when I, when I say I would drop everything just for sax quartet. But I would, I would, it's, it's, it's just, that's my thing. It, it, it's um, it's just a lovely sound. It's very flexible. Um, the people are usually nice. <laughs> and I have never played a saxophone quartet concert any place where the audience wasn't just bowled over. Most people think saxophone and they think rock and roll or jazz or whatever, and that's great. But they never think of the classical saxophone. They don't think of it in that context. The saxophone's been shortchanged that way. But if I could, I would play that and, and balance out the shortchangedness. Uh, usually, if you're playing concert music as a saxophone player, you're playing with band. And, well, that's all winds and lots of percussion. And you have to play at that level. It's just a louder thing than playing orchestra. Usually, it doesn't have to be, but generally it is. Mm -hmm. Playing with an orchestra, you you let's just say you have to play with your indoor voice, right. and and, and that, that's good because it's so easy. You 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 get accustomed to speaking in a right. loud tone of voice and. You lose a certain amount of subtlety. Exactly, and it's uh, it's different playing ensembles with a large orchestra. Oh, oh, it is. Um, 
the few times I've I was lucky enough to to play with AMO, it was even though um, this was several years ago and it's an amateur orchestra, it still required a certain amount of finesse, and um, that's one thing a lot of saxophone players never get to experience is, is positioning yourself to fit in without sticking out or changing the color of the sound. Right, with forcing it. I, it and, and the tone, nonetheless, carries. Oh, yeah. Above. Well, oh, it can. It can. And I would can. like to think that I can play politely enough to, to fit in. <laughs> and be heard still. And, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. There's a time and place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, well, we were doing the Our Lazy and Sweet. There's a couple of lovely solos where basically the saxophone just says, okay, orchestra, step aside, I'm going to sing this. And that's lovely. And then there are other places where you're playing basically a third French horn part. And it's like, well, you have to be flexible. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, who's your favorite composer for a sax? That's, oh, that's such an unfair question. <laughs> because there's just so much. I like to play Bach on saxophone. A lot of cello music works perfectly right. on Barry Sax. Right. But Bach's not my favorite. I mean, surely you have to have a little Ravel and Debussy, and you have to have all the modern composers. I, 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 I can't say who my favorite composer yeah. is. It's, uh, the one I'm working on right now. <laughs> who is that? Who, 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 who? Actually, I'm playing a lot of Scott Joplin right now. Oh, nice. Mm. nice. Yeah, I, Is that with a the quartet? There, yes, it's with a quartet, but it's not a saxophone quartet. I am actually playing the bassoon part in a double reed quartet, which is like two oboes and an English horn, and supposedly a bassoon player, but no bassoon player was found at hand. Mm -hmm. So there you are. There I am. <laughs> That's great. And. That's a different thing because the the smaller double reeds have such a small yeah. sound, mm -hmm. and a Barry sax can have a really big, <laughs> big yeah. Mack truck of a sound. So I had to condense the sound. I had to play a little smaller, put myself under. It's good practice. And do you? record during rehearsals and listen to the balances or you just hear them live? Oh, this was, this particular quartet, we've not actually performed together. Mm -hmm. We are um, about to do a, um, a virtual concert. Mm -hmm. So everyone submitted a video of themselves playing and Lucky me, one of the skills I've picked up along the way is a little bit of video and audio editing. So I get to make a composite of all the parts, align the sound so that the sound and the video go together and all those separately recorded parts mm -hmm. kind of come into sync. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like we're together. I would later when it's safe and responsible to play together, I would love to sit and read through the same piece again, because I know the people involved in the quartet are better musicians than, than um, it initially sounds like. I'm willing to take the flack for it not being perfectly aligned and perfectly in tune. Sure. Um, it's, it's hard. It's, it, it's really hard. Well, it, it's a lot of work, and I there, there have not been that many ensembles I've seen um, at the college level doing full concerts. So I have to give give um, a big round of applause to Slava Prochenko, who's the director at the um, Georgia State Perimeter, um, director of the Wind Ensemble. He, this was his idea. He put it together, and he's been the big cheerleader. Fortunately, he's the one that does the big band pieces, so I don't have to do those. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really have to give him a big round of applause because 
it would have been just as easy to say, ah, yeah, what go, can you do? Go away. Yeah. 